Roger Pisby here from Skill Builder and we've been doing a bit of Weber Monocouche on this bungalow. I did this with my mate Duncan, we've never done it before but we thought we'd have a go. We've done a little bit of rendering so we thought we were in with a chance and quite honestly we found it a lot easier than we suspected. This is a one coat self coloured system that you put on instead of render and because it's self-coloured and because you won't be painting it, you just scratch the surface up. And the reason you do that is because the cement shrinks in render and when it rains, you get that slight micro crazing. It doesn't do any harm, but it just doesn't look great. So just by scratching the surface up, you break that tension on the surface and it saves that shrinkage cracking the surface up. So it's a great system. The only downside of it I'd say is that sometimes you see streaking on it where people haven't put little upstands at the edge of the window sills and it runs down the edge, that kind of thing. And that can be a nuisance. So what Weber have now done is they've put an algae resistant additive into that to help prevent all that staining and so on. So it's a pretty good system. On the front here we had thermalite block on this porch which is an air creep block and if you render onto thermalites you can find that they crack up. So in order to prevent that we used a fiberglass mesh which Weber sell and we embedded that in with Rendaid and then once that was dried off we went over the top with the monocouche but round the side we just went straight onto the brickwork with the monocouche and built it up in one coat and piece of cake quite honestly if you look at the detail on it I don't think you could tell that it wasn't done by an expert our trowel technique might not be the best in the world but we can improve and we got it on the wall one way or another anyway there it is I'm pleased with it now all we've got to do is finish off with the cladding at the top and lay the driveway simple Okay, so we've got the first coat on. We're gonna build this out in one coat, but we're just letting that initial bit just draw in, if you like. You get a little bit of ghosting through sometimes where you can see the brick lines. So if you try and put it on too quickly in one go, it kind of draws all that back. So doing it this way, it takes a little bit of the suction. We can now run over the top, build it up to the thickness we want, which is about 15 millimeters, and then we'd be ready to do that final bit of scratch coating. So we're just waiting for this to pick up a little bit more. It's getting there, but it's a quite a cold day today, so it's not as fast. Obviously, if you did this in the summer, it would be a lot quicker to go off. You can actually put an accelerant in this if you want to make it go off a bit faster, but if you've never done it before, I wouldn't bother with that. They also reckon it's gonna rain later on today, but because we've got such a big overhang here, we're not too worried about that, hopefully. Okay, so it's the next morning now, and although I said we'd get away with it with the rain because there was a big overhang, actually when it rained last night, it was driving in on this wall. Duncan came out here and some of it was beginning to push off at top coat. So he had to kind of wipe it down and push it back on, but he managed to save the day. We're now ready to begin the scratching. Now the scratching is there just to break the surface slightly so that you don't get crazing as it shrinks and dries out. This is lime, limestone basically, rather than sand. So it's a very different sort of material, slightly more gritty than a lot of sands. But the idea is because it's self-colored, we just want to break that surface up with the scratcher, just give it a bit of interest. And when you hold the scratcher, don't hold it like that and start going in because you'll get an uneven depth. Just hold it very delicately like this and scratch lightly. Now you can get different grades of scratches, you get different 
ones, some are pointed, some have got rounded edges, different thicknesses, so you just have to sort out what you want. You can also get very cheap ones of these. They don't last very long, but if you're only doing one job, then that's fine, but the professionals go and spend about 30 quid on one of these to get decent steel on it. But anyway, that's the job. The one thing you do need, because it's line-based, is a mask while you're doing it, because we're gonna kick up a bit of dust. So when that's done and you've cleaned up, that's the job finished. and. Uh, Pretty good stuff, I think. So I'm not gonna pretend this is easy doing this bit because actually, when you scratch it up, it's quite critical. If we'd done this on the same day, it would have been a little bit softer, a little bit easier. So you're just gonna have to work that one out. If you leave it till the next day, it's hard work, I will tell you that. But anyway, that's the job done. I hope you found that useful. I'm Roger Bisbee. Come back and see us soon on Skill Builder. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you become a subscriber, we just keep you up to date automatically on all the new videos, competitions, how-tos, everything we've got going on. And don't forget, you can also visit our website, which is full of all kinds of wonderful things.